ان الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يحملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما في فينا فيه أبدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد O servants of God who have left your business your trade and your study seeking success revere and honor your guardian cherisher and remain silent in the khutbah for it is a sin in the sight of God to speak during the khutbah and make room for your brothers and your sisters and seek the front row for there is a blessing in the front row and there is honor in our unity as an ummah ya a'udhu billahi min shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ittaqu allah wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa may yuti allah rasulahu faqad faza fawzan azima o you who have believed Revere your guardian Lord, Allah, and say that which is true. He will make whole for you your works and will forgive you your sins. And whoever has obeyed God and his messenger has already achieved a great reward. May Allah accept the shuhada of our brethren in the Ghazza and our brethren across the whole Muslim world. One of the most perplexing things about these months of genocide is that those who have been committing the genocide claim to be the victim. Even now, after this week when Israel have committed an egregious act against international law, Netanyahu is trying to present himself as a hero who has stood up for Israel. This phenomenon, is perplexing as it, as it is, is not actually unusual. We see this happening in one of the oldest tyrannies of all time. وَقَالَ الْمَلْءُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنَ أَتَذَرَ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَوْدِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ And the chieftains of Pharaoh's nation said, Are you going to leave Musa and his people to cause evil in the earth and drive you and your gods out? These people, Pharaoh's courtiers, they have just executed the magicians for believing in Allah and now they're scared of Musa and the Muslims of, and the Bani Israel to really understand this phenomenon we have to go back to an older story the story of Yusuf alayhi salam this story one, as, you should, as you probably know one of the driving forces of the story is the indignation from Yusuf's brothers notice how they are introduced qalu in qalu قَالُوا لَيُوسُفُ وَأَخُوهُ وَحَبُّ إِلَىٰ أَبِيْنَا مِنَّا وَنَحْنُ عُسْبَةِ They said, Yusuf and his brother get so much more love by dad than us. Even though we're the tough ones do all the work. Notice how in this wording, these brothers of Yusuf view themselves as the victims of an injustice. They view themselves as more worthy of love for their, from their father. And this is how they're introduced before they commit a grievous wrong against Yusuf to throw him in the well. While these brothers don't have the same political influence as Netanyahu, they have the same attitude. Another important, another important driving force is the actions of, the, of the, Aziz's wife that Yusuf lives with, who tries to, in, induce, to, tries to seduce him to zina. And notice how when she is caught in the act of abusing Yusuf, she has the audacity to accuse Yusuf of doing exactly the thing that she has been doing to him. How often have we seen tyrants like Netanyahu claim to be the victims of crimes that they themselves have committed? And when the Aziz's wife confesses herself to the, the, women, the, the, the exalted women of Egypt, look at how she phrases it. وَلَقَدْ رَابَتُّهُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ فَاسْتَعْسَمْ And I indeed tried to seduce him, but he resisted. 
it's almost as if even in this moment where she's admitting her actions, in the wording, it's almost as if even still then, she views the problem being Yusuf's fault. It's Yusuf's fault for not, for resisting my command. And then she says, and if he, does, if he does not do what I command him, he's going to go to prison and he will become amongst the humiliated. So now we have this attitude that the Aziz's wife views herself as being humiliated because of Yusuf. And now it's her time to get her own back on Yusuf. <coughs> so for this surah, the, the people who commit injustice view themselves as victims. Now, I'll tell you something interesting about Yusuf. He gets very little opportunity in the story, in the Quran, to speak for himself. When he finally gets an opportunity to, to let his feelings expressed in the Quran, it's by that time he's in prison with the, with the prisoners and he's talking to them. And so he's at the lowest point of the low, having been forcibly removed from his father, having been accused of zina, having been thrown into jail. You would expect that after all this time of silence, he's going to finally release all the frustration that's within him. What does he say? That is from the mercy of God upon us and upon all of humanity. Something very strange is going on. The people who are committing injustice view themselves as victims and the people who are actually victims have no time to complain. Perhaps this is because Yusuf has achieved a level of God consciousness, taqwa, to such an extent that he does not consider it itself, he does not consider it befitting of him to complain at all about what Allah has set for him. He can only see a reason to be grateful to Allah, to show shukr to Allah, regardless of what situation he's in, even in prison. Meanwhile, the enemies of Yusuf, his brothers and the Aziz's wife, something happened to their hearts. Instead of seeking Allah, they decided to seek worldly pleasures, something to do with the nafs, be it the respect of their father, be it, be it bodily attraction and, and uh, lust. And when they went down this path of following their nafs, suddenly every interaction between anyone became a question of, are they going to help me achieve my worldly goal or get in the way of my worldly goal? That's how they, and at the same time, they followed their nafs and the nafs most certainly commands on evil. And that is how at the same time as becoming evil people, they viewed themselves as victims in every single situation. And they went on the defensive in every single situation. If you want to know what that looks like in the 21st century, look no further. Then, then the Prophet's long emails where he boasts about how we are doing everything we can to make sure our investments are ethical and, we ha and I am doing everything I can to make sure we have a good uh, open discussion. The problem is with these students blocking up our main quad and disrupting our, our normal activities. It's their fault for causing the horrible incidents on campus. This attitude and unwillingness to speak with us, this has perpetuated ill feeling and has prevented from actual accountability in our community. Another important example is the UCL security who, I'll admit, not, there are many people in UCL security who have had decent character and have been supportive, but some and the higher-ups, when questioned about the way they have treated, especially our women, they have gone completely on the defensive. They have gone, how dare you tell me how to do my job? I have you know, it's their fault. They will try to punch me in the nose and all this, and, and this, and this, and this. This attitude of I'm the victim, you're the enemy. This inability to accept that maybe they've done something wrong gets in the way of any form of accountability and has perpetuated injustice on our campus and has perpetuated injustice against our women. May Allah give our, our sisters sober as they, as they strive against this injustice. Another important example I want to mention is on my, on my own part. After all these months of activism, it is tempting for me to think that I'm deserving of some sort of acknowledgement for what I've been doing for Palestine. And if this feeling, it is, it is good to feel grateful to Allah and good about the, about the good things you've done, but if that feeling does not go, un, does not go unchecked, if you don't check that feeling, 
it could potentially lead to that same sort of mentality as Eustace Brothers, as the Aziz Bife, as Pharaoh, as Michael Provost, where you view everyone as either on your side or against your side, you become the victim, you start comparing yourself to other Palestine activists, being like, why do they get more recognition than me? Why do they get this when I don't get this? Why do I get, abused? Why do I get insulted by the other activists like this? And that attitude could, will hinder the Palestinian movement far more than help anyone. It would be far better for the common humanity, for common society, if Michael Provost, if the Peace Security, and if myself, looked beyond our petty desires of the nut, looked beyond these fleeting desires of the, of the world, and had the courage to look at the, at the rights that other people have upon us, and have the courage to admit when we have done something wrong, and to, and to be part of, much great, of something much greater than our own selves. I admit this is not easy to achieve. It takes the brothers of Yusuf a whole surah to achieve this. But if you can do that battle against enough, the reward is immense. As Sheikh Abdul Hakim Raz said to me once upon a night in Ramadan, let go of the nuff and then everything becomes real. Aqooli qawli hadha, astaghfiru Allahu li wa laikum, wa sali sa'ir al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu inna hu hu al-ghafur rahim. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yusuf alayhi salam is described in the Quran as a muhsin. And we have highlighted some of the, one, one of the key aspects about the attitude that one has to have if they are to follow in that footsteps of Yusuf and become a muhsin themselves. I want to, t- to highlight one final aspect that makes someone a muhsin. There is too much time to, to there is too much to discuss about what makes one an, one of the good doers and muhsin. But I want to mention one aspect about one's relation with Allah. You are allowed to feel the difficulty of hardship. And you are allowed to plead, to call out to Allah about the difficulty you are in. We have many instances of the Prophet doing so in the Quran. But never let your difficulty and let the pain you are feeling, never let that blacken your love for Allah and your trust in his divine wisdom and decree. And don't you ever think that Allah is out to get you. Don't you ever think that Allah wants to humiliate you. Don't you dare say Allah is your enemy when he is in fact your greatest of friends. The campers at UCL have been through many trials and perhaps they are now going through their greatest trial of all. It can be tempting in this situation to call out, Allah, why are you protesting me like this? Why are you charging us with this? I, of course I care about the Palestinians, but a court case? I can't do a court case. I'm just a poor student, I don't have any money. How am I going to pay for the legal fees? The problem is, were we to say that, we would sound all too like the people of Medina who said, Rabbana lima katamna alayna al-qital. Oh Lord, why do you prescribe fighting for us? Like, of course I believe in Allah and His Messenger and yeah, I love the Quran and the sound of it and I, I, pray, I do my du'a and my, my prayer but war? War for the sake of Allah? I, I can't, I'm no fighter, I'm no soldier I, I, I don't have any money to finance that sort of stuff Do you want me to be like, do you want me to be like Abu Bakr and Umar? Who have like, bled their homes and given up all their wealth? Do you want me to waste my wealth like them? Shouldn't we believe like those idiots believe? But who has gone down in history as the true believers and the true idiots? Abu Bakr, Musa, Radullah Anhuma, Muhajireen, the sincere of the Ansar. These people are giants in our tradition because they had something of the character of Yusuf alayhi salam. They understood that there is something more to life than just their, their nuts and their desires. That there is no place to complain to Allah and to call him an enemy when he, when there was in fact so much to be grateful to Allah for. And they understood that in a time of crisis, the needs of oneself are secondary. When the kafirun 
surround the believers at Medina, when they enact a blockade on the believers and try and prepare to enact a genocide against the believers in the Battle of Ahzab, these noble people understood that their desires become secondary and that they must submit themselves to a greater cause and become one with their ummah for the cause of Allah. And with that realization came a certain sakina, a certain tranquility from none but Allah. And with that tranquility, nothing in the world could stop them. Nothing in the world could stop them. That is why the courtiers of Pharaoh were so terrified of Musa and the Bani Israel. They didn't have the resources like, like Pharaoh. And neither do the people of Gaza have the resources like Netanyahu. But they have the character. They have the character that can outshine anything. The righteous, those close to Allah, will never be intimidated by the kafirun. They will never be intimidated. Not until they are liberated. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhaab al-na. Rabbi rahmuhma kama rabbayani sughira. Oh Allah, bless and honor my parents who have raised me in the path of Islam and have given me a true understanding of the Quran and have given me the true balance of my spirituality and my political activism. Ya Allah, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhaab al-na. Rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'fa id hadaytana wa hab lana min lagunka rahma. إنك أنت الوهاب عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيئائي للقربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأعطي مسكنا The Eastern Encampment is going to court next Tuesday and Alhamdulillah we have expert lawyers who are going to, who are going to champion our cause uh, We need your help though with raising money for the legal fees so if you can, uh, you can find us on UCL Stand for Justice on our Instagram page, UCL Stand for Justice, you can find the donation link in the bio. And please give whatever you can and share it as far and wide as you can. Jazakumullah khair.